My name is Gordon Goldsboro of the Manitoba Historical Society. And I'm Morgana Malian, a local historian and researcher. Together, we're teaming up to learn more about the rich history of this province. And explore heritage sites that are definitely off the beaten path. This is Hidden Manitoba. In this episode, we're visiting the Concrete Arch Bridge near Margaret. I'm finding some interesting information about the bridge, such as it was built in 1917 for a cost of approximately $6,000. This is a great find. I believe this is a photo of the bridge during its construction. I'm also finding evidence as to why a concrete bridge of this nature was required in the area at this time. There is also evidence that a number of other municipalities began to build similar types of roadway infrastructure by the second decade of the 20th century. This is a map of the major highways in Manitoba from 1924. Um, and if we look here, Margaret is listed. You can find it right there. So this type of map is really interesting because sort of around 1920, a couple years after the bridge in Margaret was built, uh, these types of road maps are becoming more popular sort of among the common people in the rural communities. Uh, this is because uh, vehicular means of transportation is becoming a lot more popular and people need these types of maps in order to know where they're going. Here is another image of a motor vehicle trying to navigate some wet Manitoba roads. It's motor vehicles like this one that would have made use of the bridge when it opened in 1917. The bridge is just a short drive south from Brandon. I'm excited to visit it as this site is a, a very important one for the history of transportation in Manitoba because it tells us how people used to get across rivers. The valley is very picturesque, but over a hundred years ago, it was an impediment to transportation in that to get from one side to the other, you'd have to wade across the stream. And that's okay if you're just on foot or even if you're on horseback, but if you've got a vehicle of some kind, that's a real problem. So people began to realize very early that in order to be able to get from place to place on the prairies, you had to build bridges. The first few bridges they built were of wood, and that's fine, but of course they don't have the kind of longevity that we'd like. So eventually they began to realize to have bridges that would last longer, they'd have to make them out of a more robust material, and concrete was a logical choice. So in this little river valley, you have here three generations of the ways that people used to cross rivers two of concrete bridges and one sort of of an earthen fill. So right now, for instance, we are standing on the second generation bridge that was built here. The second generation bridge is a fantastic example of arch construction. Basically the idea was that they would have an arch shape underneath the deck of the bridge that would hold up the massive weight of the concrete for the bridge itself. I don't know whether it was because they were proud of their work or simply because they wanted to keep track for their record keeping, but in each of their bridges, they actually stamped its date of manufacture. So we see over here on the end of this column, stamped in the concrete, May 1917. Another thing that we can see from here is the current bridge. In fact, it would be hard even to call it a bridge other than the fact that it's crossing over water. The current bridge hardly deserves the name. It's actually not much more than a culvert, a very large culvert, that is overlain by a massive amount of fill, gravel and soil. I want to take a closer look at what have, would have been the first bridge on this site, but on my way down to it, I'm confronted by two levels of deterioration that are apparent in the second generation bridge. We see the top of the bridge very badly deteriorated. We see the crumbling concrete revealing these uh, steel reinforcing rods in the concrete. This is not in good condition. This is really starting to deteriorate. But we get below that and we see a remarkably intact bridge. One theory is that two different types of concrete were used. One was of high grade, probably from off site, and the other was of lower grade made from local materials but it's just absolutely amazing how the lower bridge is so intact given that it's almost a hundred years old compared to the very badly degraded uh, deck we see above us. 
From the valley floor, the final layer of the site reveals itself. So behind me is probably what is the first bridge at this site, called a concrete culvert bridge. And the idea was it was a fairly modest bridge meant to convey a small meandering creek through it and beyond. So we just see it's a consist of basically just a, a, a passageway through which the river would carry. But probably it would prove to be inadequate. One spring they probably found enormous volumes of water going down this creek, so much so that it was impossible to cross over the top of this culvert, and that's what necessitated the construction of the concrete arch bridge above it. The important thing about the Margaret site is that it illustrates three generations in the bridge technology of Manitoba, and bridge technology is an important part of the transportation history of the province.